Hi, I'm Brian Dickinson, and this is a training bite on basic concurrent sequences in UVM. So this is the first in a series of training bytes that will show you how to use UVM concurrent sequences to create interrupt handling routines in UVM. And in this first training bite, we're going to have a look at the basics, just simple concurrent sequences. And we'll start off with a simple example. So I have a requirement that my UVC needs to create data items from three separate data streams, and we need to mix these items on my sequencer and driver. The standard solution for this is to use a fork join within a sequence body to execute multiple do macros or subsequences in parallel, each block creating my different stream of data. So I have three streams here creating different data items. However, my driver obviously can only execute one item at a time. My sequencer, though, has a built-in arbitration mechanism that allows to, it to select between the multiple items which are available at a given time and pass one item at a time down to the driver. Uh, let's have a look at a quick example. So here I have my interleaved sequence here that contains a fork join. Uh, three blocks in my fork join. Okay, uh, the stream one block here creates data starting at 10, stream two creates a data starting at 20, and stream three creates a data starting at 30. And we use simple for loops inside of each block wrapped around a, a simple do macro in order to create the data. Now, instead of using the do macros, we could call subsequences instead of the macros, and that's actually a far better solution. So here we're going to replace the do macro with a nested sequence call called increment sequence. Increment sequence will count up data values. Uh, we define the starting value of the data using the sequence property count, which is randomized. And we use a constraint here to give us a variety of starting values from 10 to 40. And then what we're going to do inside of my interleave sequence is now uh, put the nested sequence calls inside of the fork join blocks. So now I'm calling nested sequences rather than the do macros directly. And this is a far better solution because it gives us much more control of the sequence items in terms of their priority, their synchronization, and their arbitration. Remember, though, there's many different sources of concurrent activity for a sequence. So for a given sequencer, we can be giving it data items from a test class, for example, using the start method call to execute a sequence on the sequencer. And the test sequence may contain a fork block, which is executing multiple sequence items on that sequencer. We can also tell a sequencer what to do using a configuration setting to set the default sequence property of the sequencer to a given sequence. And we can also uh, pass information down from a virtual sequence or a multi-channel sequence, which is using do on macros in order to execute sequences on that sequencer. And again, the virtual sequence could contain fork join blocks, which are executing multiple sequences on a given sequencer. So there's many different sources of concurrent sequence activity. So given all this information, how does the sequencer decide which item to send next down to the driver? So it has a built-in arbitration mechanism that allows it to select between all the items which are currently waiting to be processed. Now the arbitration mechanism is set via a simple sequencer method, set underscore arbitration. There's various arbitration methods here. In this training bite, we'll have a look at the first two, the FIFO and the random. Uh, notice from UVM 1.2, these arbitration names are prefixed with UVM underscore uh, just for syntactic consistency. So let's have a look at the FIFO arbitration mechanism. So here I have three streams of data passing information down to my sequencer. The items at the head of the queue, 10, 20, and 30. These are the next items, the next available items my sequencer. And my sequencer has to select between one of these three items. Now the way the uh, FIFO arbitration scheme works is that the sequencer simply maintains a FIFO of the items which are sent to it and then passes the items down to the driver in the order of arrival and this is the built-in default arbitration scheme. 
Now, for items which arrive at the same time point, their order of arrival at the sequencer is dependent upon their execution order when they are generated. So, for example, if they're generated from multiple fork join blocks, it depends on the execution order of those branches in the fork join. Uh, and again, this is non-deterministic uh, by the rules of uh, Verilog, but is uh, predictable between uh, different simulation runs. So, I assume that uh, these data items arrived top-down, so 10 arrived first, then 20, and then 30. So the simple FIFO arbitration mechanism just uh, deals with these items in the order in which they appear. So every time we take a data item from a stream, it queues up the next item, but that is not served, that is not uh, dealt with until the other items have been sent down, which are rating in the queue. Okay, so this is the built-in arbitration mechanism. Uh, the other one we're going to have a look at in this training byte is the random arbitration method. Okay, so now uh, the items waiting to be processed are randomly selected. Okay, so we work out which items that we have, and then we randomly select one of the waiting items, the sequencer does, and passes it down to the driver. So here I have three items waiting, 10, 20, and 30. We pick one of those, perhaps 20, send that down first. Stream 2 then passes in the next item, 21. Okay, I now have again three items, 10, 21, and 30, waiting at the sequencer. The sequencer then randomly selects one of those, 30, and passes it down. Stream 3 generates the next item, 31, passes that down to the sequencer. Again, I have three items, 10, 21, and 31 to be randomly selected from. We pick maybe 10, and then we keep on going here, randomly selecting one of the items available to pass it down to the driver. Now, obviously, because this is random selection, when you change the randomization seed of your simulator, this can change the order of execution, the order of selection of the items from the streams. And remember, uh, if you want to use the random arbitration policy, you need to call this sequencer method set underscore arbitration to define that this is the new scheme for your sequencer. Okay, so this training byte covered the simple concurrent sequences and the simple arbitration mechanisms. The next byte in the series will have a look at priority items and the use of the weighted strict FIFO and strict random arbitration schemes. And then later bytes in the series will have a look at user-defined arbitration, the use of lock and grab for exclusive access, and finally building what we've learnt into a scheme for defining concurrent sequences for uh, simple and prioritized instruct handling. Thank you.